Last night, President Trump held his first real campaign rally of 2020. And his first campaign rally of 2020 was a blowout. I mean, there were thousands and thousands of people who showed up. Gigantic crowd there on the border in El Paso. And it was Trump at his finest. I mean, it was freewheeling Trump. It was Trump doing what he does best, just going off on folks. It was pretty solid stuff. So he began by launching into an attack on the Green New Deal and Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez's stupid frequently asked questions and backgrounder checklist. Here he is going after AOC, and it is pretty spectacular. Last week, they introduced a massive government takeover that would destroy our incredible economic gains. They introduced the so-called Green New Deal. It sounds like a high school term paper that got a low mark. This is exactly right, of course. I mean, it's as though he listens to the show, since that's exactly what I said when it came out. <laughs> I said that this was a paper that, that should never have gotten a C plus in an English class from like eighth grade, which is exactly right. The president has a real benefit in 2020 that people are ignoring, and that is he will be running against a Democrat. Everybody in 2020 is looking forward to the fact that Trump has low approval ratings. Oh, okay, so he's around 40, 42, 44%. <clears throat> and the going wisdom is that that's just not popular enough to get reelected. That obviously is not true. He was at 40% when he got elected in 2016. And again, Democrats, as we will get to, are interested in making fools of themselves over and over. This primary fight, not only is a lot of dirty laundry going to be aired, but an enormous amount of leftism is going to be pushed out into the public square because Democrats have to outflank each other. If somebody gets to the left of the rest of the crowd, suddenly they're distinguished from the rest of the crowd. In a race with 1,000 people, all you have to do to stand out is be the one person wearing a different color. And in the Democratic Party primaries, the only way to do that is to outflank everybody to the left. You can't outflank everybody to the right. You can't be the moderate in the race and somehow win this thing. The progressive base just won't stand for it, as Joe Biden may be about to learn. So that means that Trump is going to be able to run against the craziness of the Democrats. As I have said, for literally three years at this point, all the Democrats had to do was not be crazy. And they just can't do it. It is pathologically impossible for Democrats not to be insane at this point because Trump has driven their base totally insane. Now, does that mean they're necessarily going to lose? Should we get overconfident about this thing? No, it doesn't mean the Democrats are necessarily going to lose. Remember, Democrats thought the same thing about Republicans in 2016. They thought that Obama had driven the right so insane that they nominated a cartoon character TV show host and then he was going to lose because the right had been driven crazy and then Trump ended up winning. So it is quite possible for the left to be both insane and also to win. It's a, it's a risky situation in the sense that whoever is put up there for the Democrats is going to be incredibly radical. And that person does have a 40, 50, 60% shot at winning, depending on what the circumstances are. But suffice it to say, Trump is going to have a lot to run against. But it wasn't just Trump running against the Democrats. He also went after the fact checkers in the media. Again, well-deserved. You can keep your doctor. Remember that? 28 times. You can keep that didn't happen. Turned out to be a lie. Hey, where are the fact checkers? You know, some of the most dishonest people in media are the so-called fact checkers. 28 times. You can keep your doctor. That didn't turn out to be what he said. They're coming for your money and they're coming for your freedom and it'll never happen. OK, and that, of course, is exactly true. When he goes after the fact checkers, that is absolutely accurate. We talked yesterday about The Washington Post covering for AOC. So AOC lied about her own release of the, her Green New Deal backgrounder and frequently asked question. And The Washington Post refused to even give her a Pinocchio on the basis of what was an obvious lie. The fact checkers are in the Democrat camp. Trump has a lot to run on there. Trump also stood by his El Paso border remarks. There are a bunch of fact checkers who are suggesting that he was not telling the truth about the building of the border wall in El Paso. He stood by his comments anyway. I've been hearing a lot of things. Oh, the wall didn't make that much of a difference. You know where it made a big difference? Right here in El Paso. I spoke to people that have been here a long time. They said when that wall went up, it's a whole different ball game. Is that a correct statement? care whether a mayor is a Republican or a Democrat. They're full of crap when they say it hasn't made a big difference. I heard the same thing from the fake news. They said, oh, crime actually stayed the same. Didn't stay the same. Went way down. OK, so he is not wrong that crime continued to drop. The crime was already dropping by the time the border fencing was put in place. What did drop were illegal border crossings. Dan Crenshaw tweeted out yesterday a statistical chart showing that border crossing, illegal border crossings into El Paso dropped pretty dramatically after the implementation of fencing. So Trump isn't totally wrong 
about this. Trump also had one of his famous moments. Protesters showed up, and I don't know what they think they're getting done by doing this, except for giving Trump something to bounce off of. Well, what's amazing to me is how short-sighted a lot of protesters are. You know, I've had my share of protesters at my college speeches. They come and they try to disrupt. I don't know what is going through their heads. Do they actually think they are accomplishing something good? I guess that because they are patted on the back by many members of the left, because they are seen as people speaking truth to power, that this gives them the impetus to go out there and act like fools. But all they're really doing is giving the president something to club into submission. As I've been saying about President Trump for legitimately years at this point, the man is a hammer in search of a nail. Sometimes he hits a nail and it's incredibly satisfying. Sometimes he hits a baby and it's a lot less satisfying. Well, when the protester shows up, he's, they're giving him a nail that he can hit. And President Trump takes out that sledgehammer and just wails away at it. Rather than waiting online for five days, for nine days, for three weeks. Where do these people come from? Where do they come from? They go back home to mommy. They get punished when they get home. That's great. I mean, what, what can you say about that? He's not wrong. It's, it, that, that's, that's good stuff. And this is what, where the president is best, is off the cuff. Honestly, he is very quick on his feet when it comes to rebutting people who don't like him. And it comes off really well in, in crowd settings. He also went after Ralph Northam in Virginia. Again, Democrats providing him an endless font of material. All Trump has to do in 2020 is just sit back, gather material, and then make fun of it. Like really, that's all he has to do. He just has to play kind of low-rent John Stewart. All he has to do is let the Democrats say things, and then he just comes out and he mocks them or repeats their comments, then the media go crazy. How could Trump repeat his comments? So Trump goes after Ralph Northam. And it's just, I mean, this is solid stuff. This is good material from the president of the United States. Listen, is it Lincoln-esque? No, but you knew what you were getting when you elected President Trump. The guy's been this way for years. I, I, I'm still, I, I honestly, I find it rather hilarious and simultaneously off-putting when you see some of the folks who didn't vote for Trump in 2016. And I didn't vote in the 2016 election for president. When you see people who are so anti-Trump on the right that they can't appreciate the humor of what President Trump does, as though it's a brand new shock. It's a brand new terrible thing every time he does something funny. It's a brand new insult to the office. Can you get off your high horse for just a second? Barack Obama did an interview with a lady who once bathed in Cheerios. Can you get off of it? Like the office of the presidency, it's been degraded for a little while now. President Trump isn't anything new in this respect. Can you just appreciate the humor for what it is? Like instead of sitting here, and being the, the fuddy-duddy, can you just appreciate that this is some funny stuff? <laughs> Come on, it is, it's funny. Here's the president going after Ralph Northam, and it's pretty hilarious. So in Virginia, the governor, he's uh, gotten a little publicity lately. I like him, keeps us out of the papers, I like him. I'd like to find a few more guys like this one. He almost moonwalked, his wife stopped him. Darling, darling, it would be inappropriate. I want to see somebody try and imitate Michael Jackson in the moonwalk. This would not have been a good scene. His wife saved him. <laughs> Come on, that's great stuff. It's just great. I mean, look, it's true. It's true, and it's funny because it's true. He also then repeated Ralph Northam's comments about abortion, and the media went crazy. He suggested that Ralph Northam had said that a baby would be born alive during an abortion. They would keep the baby comfortable while the parents and the doctor decided whether to execute it or not. And people were like, how dare he? Ralph Northam never said that. He basically quoted Northam word for word. So this was Trump at his finest last night. If Trump does this, just this comedy routine all the way up till 2020, everyone will go home happy. The economy, if it's still good, will be good. Everybody will be in a good mood because this is some funny stuff. But he saved his best repartee for Beta O'Rourke. He saved his best stuff for Beta O'Rourke. So here's the president of the United States. Now, remember, the, this rally was, was being held at the El, El Paso County Coliseum, and it was also broadcast outside the Coliseum on a giant screen because there was an overflow crowd of several thousand people because it was like 45 degrees out there. But the president of the United States in El Paso, you're going to go and you're going to see it. In just a second, I'm going to explain to you what he did to Beto O'Rourke, who was holding a rally maybe 500, 1,000 feet away. Trump saved his finest mockery for Beto O'Rourke, who's holding a counter rally. Now, remember, El Paso is in O'Rourke's district. So you figure O'Rourke would have drawn a huge crowd. We'll get to Beto's counter rally in just a second. President Trump spared no mockery for Beto O'Rourke, went directly at him. And yeah, this, come on. Like, we live in a WWE world now. So you can either root for The Undertaker or you can root against The Undertaker. Okay, that's, that's all that's going on here. And here comes The Undertaker from the top rope with the flying elbow. Go! A young man 
who's got very little going for himself, except he's got a great first name. He is, he challenged us. So we have, let's say, 35,000 people tonight, and he has 200 people, 300 people, not too good. In fact, what I do, what I would do is I would say, that may be the end of his presidential bid, but he did challenge me. So great. Come on, that's such good stuff. You just got, President Trump, he's a showman. He's a showman. And he's at the center of this three ring circus, just making Beto O'Rourke jump through rings lit on fire.